today if uh, you have uh, the family in town and maybe you're looking for something to do you if you're probably. 21 and over always looking for something to do hey Actor and comedian Adam Ray is in town uh, doing his uh, stand-up show. Uh, you know Where's him from confetti? stage. Where's the confetti? You guys Scream. promised me confetti. <laughs> <laughs> confetti. No, nice. He's like, no, Where, we didn't. Shut where up, is, man. Where's the confetti? Yeah. Do we, anyway, you probably you know him from Spy, sure. Ghostbusters, Mad TV. You've seen him all over the place, and now he's back home for the holidays. Back Welcome home. home. Thank you so much. Really great to be here. I love uh, Santa coming to town. No, uh, still no Hanukkah, Harry. Is coming to town. Yeah, what's, but, you know, what's up with that? Dude, Jews get the shaft every year. Although this year, uh, Hanukkah starts tomorrow on Christmas Eve. So that was kind of this year we were like, hey, uh, Christmas lovers, take that. We're yeah, going to one up you. Yeah, it kind of worked out. We're going to start a day early. No, I love the holidays, though. This, I had my first glass of eggnog at 8 a.m. this morning. Are you? So you're pro nog. Pro nog, although uh, eggnog is one of those drinks where it's like nobody really knows what's in it. I just <laughs> got feeling back in the left side of my face yeah. like two minutes ago. Eggnog is one of those drinks that you're like, it tastes good. What's in it? Doesn't matter. <clears throat> but See, people I still got are scratchy. either one or the other. I mean, it's either you yeah. love eggnog, you hate eggnog. Totally. Eggnog with booze, big plus. Right. Uh, but uh, It depends on the booze, I think. I think so. Yeah. Can you talk about booze at 9 a.m.? Yeah, why not? I like your style. Well, listen, I mean, it's almost Miller time for us here. I mean, we've been on the air since 4 o'clock. It's almost Miller time. Dude, that, that just goes to show you, by the way, how lazy beer slogans are. <laughs> like, Don Julio, I'm a big tequila guy, and uh, like their slogan is, some people play the game, others change it. And Miller Lite's like, Miller Lite. It's Miller time. <laughs> and then people at home are like, you know, I thought it was 5.30, but it is Miller time. You that's know? right. That's right. And it's worked beer out okay could, for them. They could literally be like, <laughs> Bud Light, mm-mm, beer, beer. And people would be like, I was, that's what I was thinking. I was, mm-mm, and also two beers, beer, beer. I'm in. <clears throat> I'm in. Uh, I love the holidays up in Seattle, too, because you get rain. And I live in L.A. Yeah. where we get no rain. We just get sunshine and earthquakes. Right. And earthquakes are what I didn't know is such a part of the culture in Los Angeles that... People aren't phased by it at all. Like, there was a 4.4 that hit two months ago, and here's how I reacted. Ready? I woke up in the middle of the night. I went, Ugh, Ugh, and then I checked my Twitter. Like, that's my safety evacuation plan. <laughs> yeah. The world could be crumbling to an end. I'm like, what does Kanye think about all this right now? <laughs> like, you know, people really don't... Uh, also, the holidays for me are, I'm big on the Christmas movies. Yeah, oh, me too. But not like the classic Elf, A Christmas Vacation, Santa Claus with Tim Allen. I'm talking like the weird ones on like ABC Family and the Hallmark Channel <laughs> yes. that have nothing to do with Christmas, where it's like, Jared was only seven, but loved Christmas more than anything. Until one day, his best friend Noah threw his chinchilla in the fire and told him Santa has HPV. From the makers of Eggnog Holiday and Christmas Whatever comes a story of love and dedication. Mario Lopez, Cameron's Cameron, Candace Cameron, and NBA, NBA on TNT analyst Shaquille O'Neal in yes. Chinchilla Christmas Miracle. And you're like, this sounds terrible, but I'm watching half of it. Oh, I'm in. No, yeah. I'm, I'm totally. I'm just glad Candace Cameron found some work. Candace man. Cameron, she's no, she's doing fine. She's got Fuller House. Yes. Uh, yeah, big Hawks fan too, uh, which I'm yeah, pumped. Yeah, so you got your, you got your Mariners hat on. And, uh, uh, I'm, the Hawks I'm pro are Mariners. Tomorrow. You yeah. got it. Like we, you know, we're. Uh, we gotta get the Sonics back, man. We will get the Sonics back because. Because look, I love the storm, but you never hear anybody say, hey, can I borrow your Sue Bird jersey? You know what I'm saying? So we need the Sonics back in town. We do. Because uh, we need Kemp and Peyton to throw, uh, throw out some, uh, you know, um, jerseys in the rafters. I would love to see Kemp. I would love to see, if they brought the Sonics back, like a night where all the old Sonics were the guys who shot out T-shirt guns. Yes. You know? Yes. That would be great. Oh, I'm, I'm with also, you. Also, Calabro needs to be back. But the uh, Hawks are doing yeah, it. The but, Hawks see, are... but see, the Blazers just stole Calabro, which was, I mean, it was just a dagger in the heart of Sonic fans. Yeah. You know? But the Hawks are killing it. Yep. I forgot, when the Seahawks started winning, I forgot how emotionally invested you can get in sports because yes. we hadn't had anybody win for a while, yes. so much so that you like feel like you contributed to the success of the team. Absolutely. Like, when we won the Super Bowl, like, people congratulated me after for weeks. They were just like, congrats, congrats. I had no problem accepting partial responsibility. I was like, thank you so much. Thank you. No, those nine beers at halftime really helped us run the ball better. I've been yes. doing my part. Yes. Yeah. And the corned beef we made before the game, man. I was, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. They could tell that we really put yeah, our time in. You better in. believe it. We, yeah. we, we gave our 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, if you ever want to know how to break into show business, and a lot of people are like, how would you ever do that? Yeah. Well, um, you score a role in Ghostbusters yeah. by doing this. Watch. First up, I'm going to do uh, Slimer uh, doing what he do best, uh, grubbing down on some leftover room service food. 
See? See? And look what happened. What happened? I became you the became voice of the voice of Slimer for Pretty the cool. Ghostbusters Pretty movie. Cool, it's yeah. incredible. It worked. How, how did you? So you made the audition. So, yeah, so, uh, so Paul Feig put me uh, in the movie. The, the director he, of the film. Yeah, the director of the film. Uh, I played the bad guy in the movie, The Heat, with Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy. And, uh, and then he gave me a little role in Spy. And then Ghostbusters, I had a little part in. And then, you know, it's just out of sight, out of mind. You have to think th that they're not thinking of you. And, like, I knew that Paul wasn't going to get a celebrity to do Slimer. Like, if he was going to get Morgan Freeman, he would have just gotten Morgan Freeman to be like, you know, hello, I'm Slimer. I wish I could tell you I'm not a scary ghost, but I am. Boo. And the Ghostbusters are like, all right, that's not that scary of a voice. Maybe we could get somebody who's not famous. And so I made that tape to kind of like, again, out of sight, out of mind. Like, I knew he wasn't thinking about me for it. So I made him think about me for it. And then he, uh, and then he gave it to me, you know? That's just incredible. Cool, yeah. And th things have been going really well. Mad TV, too. You Mad TV, to, yeah. I was yeah. on the reboot of Mad TV. Uh, it's on the uh, CW. I think all the episodes are, are on uh, online or on my YouTube channel. Uh, but, yeah, we're uh, waiting to see if we come back for a season two, which would be rad. And then, uh, you know, I do a podcast called About Last Night, uh, which uh, you guys can get on iTunes. We've had on Melissa McCarthy, Jason Derulo, Dana Carvey, Tony Danza. Uh, I got to interview Tony Danza as Tony Danza because that was one of my first impressions. So, basically, it was a Danza no, on Danza no interview. Way. So I was like, oh, I was like, uh, I was like, Tony, what's uh, I was like, what's <laughs> what's your favorite food? And he was like, <laughs> our favorite food is a meatball marinara. You know, you go down to like Fourth and and and, and Stewart Street, you get those. And I was like, oh, I love those meatballs. He's like, I know you do. I was like, I know you do. It was uh, my head exploded. And then uh, and I do the podcast with another comedian buddy of mine named Brad Williams, who's a big uh, comedian, uh, hilarious, one of my best friends, also a little person. And I don't know if you guys out there have a dwarf best friend in your life, but if you don't, I highly Where's my camera? Here it is. It, if you don't, where's my camera? Where is it? Right there. If you don't, which one? Right there. If you don't have a dwarf best friend for the holidays, I recommend you get one. Santa's probably got a few lying around the shop. And it's it's street cred. People don't mess with you when you got a little. I, first of all, I didn't know a lot about the little people community until I became friends with Brad. I didn't know they could drive, for example. Right? Yeah. Two months into hanging out, we're leaving a comedy club. He's like, hey, man, do you want to ride? I was like, on your dragon? Like, what are you talking about, right? Turns out he drives a Mini Cooper. I don't know if it's for the joke, but uh, <laughs> but it's... Um Look, I, I really like pushed SUV. a lot for that bit, and you guys did not go for it. So <laughs> it's 9 a.m. I know it's early. I know you got the traffic coming up, but get on board with one dwarf joke before 10 a.m. Adam, great to have you. you. And Can we uh, plug the show? Adam, right? What? Can we plug the stand-up show? We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna oh, plug the, the heck prompter. out of it, right? Look at that! It's like we got a big, oh, huge my. screen you with your name. Yeah, look you, at that. Did you ever want? You wanted your name in lights, and you boom. Don't ever let anybody say you guys don't have the best graphics in morning TV, because I love the little look. It's it kind of in the background, the mic and the drama mask. What is Is the that mask? a drama mask? That's I, the scariest that thing is... I've ever seen. That's like, oh my God. I think I no, saw no, that no, in a NyQuil dream once. Why? <laughs> what is that? That's why, like, that's why the cover we go for with the Chinchilla Christmas. In the background. Good Lord. The... What is that? Who's oh, your graphics oh, guy? Our, our, our producer just said that is what pops up when you type in comedy for a background. Good Lord. In our really? system. In the best not, graphic system in morning television. Are you, did you, are you, did you, what did you, like, Sinbad didn't pop up? Like, that's what came up? You would think, or Carrot Top, right? I mean, that would, that would be that's, more appropriate. That is what people think of when they think of stand-up comedy. Oh, they immediately go, Can do you, you know Carrot Top? In case you didn't <laughs> read that, Columbia City Theater yeah. on Rainier Avenue, doors open at 7. Shows you can buy eight. tickets online at ticketfly.com. It is 21 and over. Are you going to swear? <laughs> You said that like my You're mom who just You're going to use coarse it. language on stage in Maybe front of a people? Maybe a little bit, but it's carefully used like swear words. I'm not like F-bombs all over the place, but like they're, you know, they're used to accent certain jokes. You should be ashamed of yourself, Adam Ray. I, I might say Using the word. Using that coarse language in public. I might, hey, the things we were talking about before we came on <laughs> air, people would love to know. Uh, I will say the word poop, though. You can get away with poop. Okay. Right. My mom's going to be there, and she's, you know, look, my mom is a Swiss. My mom just started to <laughs> fart and not realize it, and that's a big part. That's the worst thing ever. I come home, my mom's 67 years old, and just, she has no idea. She's like, oh, what's going on? It's a great day. I'm like, well, it's not that. It was great. until I was like, mom, with that smell, you can't feel anything that's coming out of you? The segment was going so well, too. Come to the show. Yes. Columbia City Adam, Theater, great 8 p.m. Welcome home, Dude, man. you're the best. All right, Go good Hawks. to have you. All right.